Hello, everyone. My name is Mike Dowding, and I'm a faculty member with the physics department here at South Dakota Mines. And this video is for the purposes of basically showing you where everything for our course is available online. We're also going to take some time to go through the syllabus uh, so that everyone is aware of the new policy changes that have happened um, for the new fall semester. And uh, also to show you links to our online homework and D2L. So I will be emailing all this information out with the appropriate links, but in case you're um, a late registration or you just didn't get the email, then everything that you need to know should be in this video. Um, we'll also go over some of this material during the, the first day of class uh, through a, a synchronous Zoom session. Um, but this information will also be available through the, the different documents that I'm going to show you here. So the easiest way to get access to all of this is just to go to the school's main page. And over here in the search engine, we're going to put in my last name. And when we search this, there we go. Uh, we'll have to scroll down a little bit. And right there, we have my name. And this is my profile page here at the school. Uh, if you want to read a little bit about me, you can do that. But down here is the course listing for fall 2020. Uh, this is obviously for Physics 211. University Physics 1. So we're going to go ahead and click on uh, course materials. If you just click on the, the title for the course, it will automatically open up the syllabus, but it won't show you all of the other course materials. So we'll click on course materials. And we've got a few things that are already posted here. Um, I will be posting uh, more things as needed. And I'll send out an email letting you know if I've posted anything new here. Uh, most importantly, we have the syllabus, obviously. We have uh, some formula sheets that you can use on your exams. And then I have a D2L link to my course page and what we are calling the supplemental instruction course page. Now, it's very important to distinguish between the two. For this particular course link, and I'm going to go ahead and, and click on this, um, this course link is for me, for Michael Dowding's Physics 211 course. Now, there are other professors out there that are teaching the same course, but it's a different section, and so they're going to have a different uh, D2L link. And so you'll need to make sure that uh, when you log on to D12, that you're logging into the appropriate course link. But if you're not registered in um, my class, then you shouldn't have um, access to this D2L link. However, you will have access to, um, oops, went back too far. <clears throat> you will have access to the supplemental instruction D2L regardless of who your professor is. And this is actually where a good majority of the course content is going to take place. And so we, we specifically opened up this supplemental instruction for all students to use regardless of who their professor is so that you can utilize things like the discussion boards, the live chat, the Zoom, and then uh, any of the live synchronous stuff that happens for this course. The professors will use Zoom for those live synchronous components and it will automatically be recorded to the cloud. And so you can come to this page and you can access all of those videos throughout the, throughout the course of the semester. Uh, but let's go back to uh, this page right here. And for the course listings, uh, one thing that we do need to go through, like I said, is the syllabus so that we're 
fully aware of all the policies and what's going to happen for this semester. And then we can come back and we can take a look at um, what's going to happen in D2L and also uh, the online homework website called Wiley Plus. So we'll go ahead and click on the syllabus. Um, I also have the syllabus posted um, for my page, but each professor will have their own individual syllabus posted to their course page. Um, do, do keep in mind that as we go through this syllabus, um, any of the any of the information pertaining to uh, you know email, office, phone, things like that, this is all for me. If if I am not your regular professor, um, then you'll need to to track down the syllabus for them so that you get all of the appropriate contact information. Um, also, also worth noting, each professor has their own individual um, homework sessions. Even though everybody's going to be using the same homework assignments and everyone will be getting the same exams, each professor is in control of their own class section. Uh, so do, do keep that in mind. Um, as I'm going through this syllabus. But all of the policies should be the same, regardless of uh, which course section you're in. Oh, we've got some pictures there of the, the NeoWise viewing that we did. But uh, where'd that go? I don't need that. Okay, we'll zoom in a little bit so we can read this better. So, as I said, I'm Mike Doubting. There's my office and my phone number. My preferred method of contact is by email. And all the other professors, that's probably going to be their preferred method of contact as well, that you email them. Um, I will have an open door policy for office hours. If I'm in my office and you happen to stop by, and I'm there, and if I'm available to help you out, that's fine. Just make sure that um, you have a mask on as you come in and that we're social distancing. Otherwise, if you would prefer to schedule an appointment, we can meet over the internet through Zoom. And uh, so just email me and let me know, and we'll get that taken care of. This is the textbook that we'll be using. Uh, this is what the physical copy looks like. However, with the bookstore, we've uh, transitioned completely over to uh, online access with the electronic textbook. And first day access is available through the university bookstore. You just need to make sure that uh, you have opted in for the payment. So if you opt in, that means that the bookstore will take care of your registration for the book and for the online homework website. And they will arrange for you to have the first day access and then they just um, place the cost of the book onto your bill with your tuition. If you opt out of the payment, then it is your responsibility to take care of all the arrangements in purchasing the textbook and uh, getting getting your online access, getting a, a registration code, etc. It's, it's just so much easier to let the bookstore take care of that. So I highly suggest that you opt in. And then I believe as long as you uh, as long as you register and take physics two within one calendar year, uh, you can use the same book and the same uh, profile. You don't have to. You don't have to re-register for the online homework. More importantly, you don't have to pay for it again. Um, if you don't have to take physics two, um, don't need to worry about it. But if you do have to take physics two, I, I highly recommend that you don't wait too long before you take it, because uh, if that if that account expires, then you will have to to pay for another registration code, um, or if the edition of the book is updated, then you would have you would have to pay again. Uh, some special notes: 
Um, we, we do have an algebra-based physics course. Um, neither of these, I believe, um, well, I'll, I'll say that uh, there are some programs on campus that do require these, but you can't take both sets and receive uh, credit towards your program of study. It's either one or the other. And most, most programs of study on campus require the 200 level, which is the, the calculus based. Everything that we do for this class will be online, so obviously you will need internet access. Um, all of the homework quizzes, exams will be accessed online. Um, registration for Wiley Plus, which is the homework website, is required. Um, with that, if you do not have an account on Wiley Plus, then there is nowhere for me to record your grades, which means that you will have a zero at the end of the semester. So make sure that you are signed up for Wiley Plus and make sure that you're obviously signed up for the right section. But again, if you um, let the bookstore take care of all that, then you shouldn't have to worry about anything. Um, this right here, this is the link to my homework section. If I am not your professor, then this is not the correct link for you. You will need to check with your professor uh, to get the appropriate link through Wiley Plus. Or you can, you can search the Wiley Plus website for your professor's name. Uh, but again, um, if you let the bookstore take care of everything, then when you log into Wiley Plus, it should, it should link you directly to your homework page for your professor. And then for any of the, uh, the online synchronous components of the course, um, it, is, it is the, the school's policy that you have your webcam turned on so that we can see you and so that we can um, actually verify that you, you are who you say you are. Um, we're also going to need you to uh, log in to the Zoom sessions. Um, through your uh, school account so that your name shows up. Otherwise, if it just, you know, if you just log in as a guest, it doesn't show who you are. And we do have a participation component to the class where we're going to go through and review those, those uh, Zoom videos and see who actually showed up, who didn't. And that's how we're going to, to take care of some of the participation points for the semester. All right, now the next link here, this is the supplemental instruction link. So this is the one that works for everyone. So this, this is gonna be the, the, the joint uh, collective D2L link that all of the professors will be using, that all of the students will be using. Um, again, this is, this is so that everybody's getting the same content, everybody, um, can communicate with each other through that particular D2L section. Um, so it really, that's this is just to make everybody's life easier to have everything in one spot. Prerequisites for the course, uh, you must have taken and passed Calc 1. Uh, if, you, if you don't meet those uh, requirements, then you will be dropped from the course. Um, if you know that you don't meet one of those requirements, it's best that you drop yourself now so that you can rearrange your schedule accordingly. But um, eventually the registrar's office will track you down and we will have to drop you from the course. Um, I know that there are a lot of exceptions out there. Um, people say they've, you know, they've taken calculus before, um, but Maybe it was in high school, maybe they did AP Calc, but they didn't take the AP test. Well, in that case, it, you know, we don't have that test score that shows that you passed, and so you'll have to take it. Um, maybe you, you took the class and uh, you, had to, you had to drop out, but you were doing really well. Again, that doesn't count. We have to have something on your transcript that shows that you took Calc 1 and that you passed Calc 1 with a D or better. 
Uh, if you're waiting on transfer credits from another school, um, make sure that the registrar's office knows about that so that they don't drop you from the class. Um, other, than, other than that, um, I, I think we should be good with the prerequisites. Uh, as far as the course description goes and the general education outcomes, I'll go ahead and let you read over that on your own time. Uh, this is basically just uh, a spoiler as to what we're going to learn over the course of the semester. Eventually we'll get to all of this uh, along with the student learning outcomes. Uh, for instructional methods, we're going to treat this basically like a flipped classroom. I spent quite a, quite a bit of time over the summer recording lectures for all the different chapters and so those lectures those videos will be made available to you so you can watch them whenever you want. You can re-watch them, go back review, um, but then when we log in during class time we'll use that time to discuss the, the course material, go over some example problems, um, maybe do maybe do a little bit of uh, class work, have you work, have you work in uh, breakout rooms with Zoom, uh, but whatever whatever the day's activity is, that's that's going to be up to the professor that's teaching that particular course section, and you are welcome to uh, dial into any of the professor's um, live synchronous uh, recitations that you want to. There are four different instructors that are teaching Physics 211 for the fall. Uh, so you're, you're welcome to log in to any one of those four times, but we do expect that you log in and that you participate in those recitations every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And that, that uh, falls into the participation component of the course. We're going to have two exams during the semester. Uh, so there will be an, uh, an exam right around mid-semester. We'll have an exam right at the end of the semester. And then there's going to be a, a comprehensive final. So in total, three exams. The dates for those exams are listed here. And the final exam, um, there, there has been some discussion over finals week as to whether or not the school is actually going to have a schedule or not. Uh, but we've been told that as long as we uh, open up the exam for a, a reasonable window of opportunity that we can we can go ahead and uh, schedule the exam as as we deem appropriate. So we're going to have the, the final exam open the first day of finals week, which is December 2nd. That's a Wednesday. And we'll keep that open until just before midnight on Friday, December 4th. So that's that's going to give you uh, more more than two full days to sit down and access the final and take it. And then we'll, we'll do something similar with exams one and two. We'll have a, a window of opportunity where you can log in, sit down, take the exam. Um, We've, we've, we've had a couple of trial runs with this in previous semesters, and it's actually worked out really well. So I think uh, most students appreciate that. We will administer those exams through Wiley Plus. So that's the, the same online website that we have all of the homework at. So again, if you don't have a Wiley account, you don't have access to the homework, you don't have access to the tests, which means there's no way of recording scores for you. So it's very important that you have that Wiley Plus account. Here's how everything is going to be um, spread out in terms of points. 150 points available for the homework. We will have weekly quizzes. These will be asynchronous, so you can log in um, to uh, D2L. D2L is where these quizzes will be. And there will, there will be a window of opportunity where you can 
log in, sit down, take the quiz, very similar to the, the tests. Um, they will be timed. We'll give you about, um, I think it's 30 minutes to sit down, take the quiz. And that will, that will also count towards your participation during the week. The other part of the participation is uh, dialing into those Zoom sessions and participating. And we have the two exams, 100 points each. Final exam, 150, we add all that up. We have a grand total of 600 points. The grading scale for physics is a bit more forgiving than some of the other departments. We work on a 15 point scale until you get down to the D range. And then uh, anything below 50% is an F. Um, I, I highly recommend that you you don't let your grade drop below a 70%. Um, that's, that's the point where um, if that happens, you need to start reaching out for help, either from me, one of the other professors, or um, you can head over to the, the Student Success Center and they have a lot of uh, additional help, tutoring, etc. Uh, please do take advantage of that. Um, once again, all the homework is going to be assigned and graded online through Wiley Plus. Uh, if there's any extra credit needed for the semester, we can provide an extra credit assignment after exam one. Um, we, will, we will have another method of gaining extra credit. We'll talk about a little bit later in the syllabus here. Uh, but again, with the attendance, uh, really, if you want to succeed in any class, you should be attending. Given the, the COVID-19 situation, that means logging in for these Zoom sessions and participating, doing the homework, taking the quizzes, taking the tests, you know, just making sure you're staying on top of the material and that you're getting everything turned in on time. So for Wiley Plus, Again, this link is specifically for my students. If you're taking the course with another professor, you need to make sure that you have the appropriate link. The course video lectures will be accessible through Wiley Plus. So again, if you don't have Wiley Plus, you don't have access to much of anything. Uh, these course lectures, you will access them by clicking on the Read Study Practice tab. And then if you scroll down, you'll see an area where it says Instructor Provided Materials, and it will, it will say um, Lecture Videos. And so I think what I'll do right now is I'll just go ahead and uh, click on this link so we can see what it is that I'm talking about. To log in. Yep, I'll have to log in again. So when you use that particular link, um, it it should take you directly to uh, a page that looks like this, and your uh, your username and password um, will hit. Oh, well, I, I think after just clicking on the link, you should be able to access. Um, but if you've never used Wiley before, it may ask you to uh, set up a username and password. Log in here, and this is not what you will see. This is the instructor's page. So I'll go ahead and click on our page, uh, student view. And so this is what you should see when you do get logged in. Um, for all the tabs up above here, as I mentioned, uh, if you click on the Read Study Practice tab, what this will do is it will bring up um, an option for you to 
access materials from different portions of the e-text. So this first page here is for uh, like um, remedial math and refresher materials. So if you're a little rusty on your trig or unit analysis, you can click on those links and it'll it'll take you to different uh, uh, different refresher materials. If you click on the down arrow, then it'll bring up each individual chapter and you can access each chapter that way. Um, but as I said over here, the instructor provided uh, materials. If we click on video lectures, that will take us to the uh, page where all of the video lectures are currently set. And so here, um, this is actually a, a previous syllabus video that I did for the summer class, but these are all of the videos for all the different chapters that we're going to cover. Uh, each chapter has between uh, three and five videos each, depending on the, the content of that chapter. So I, I do highly recommend that you watch each of these in order because some of the material from one chapter will uh, play into the discussion in the next. And uh, let's see what else here. I will have a separate document available uh, that gives you a timestamp for the content that is in each of these videos. Um, as, you, as you can see, I, I wasn't very good at uh, spacing out the time in some of these videos. Some of the videos might only be half an hour long. Some of them are close to 90 minutes. And that, that really has everything to do with uh, the content that was being covered. I didn't want to I didn't want to make make a video that only covered half of an example problem and then pick that up in, a, in the next video. So I just I go through the entire video until I'm done with that topic and post it. But to help out, I'll, I'll give you that document that shows the timestamps of all the different topics and the example problems that I work through. And, and so that, that should help you in, in navigating this material better if you have to go back and read something. So back to our syllabus here. So all those course lectures will be available through video format. Um, as I said, this will this will be just like a flipped classroom. You'll watch the videos and then we'll dial in um, the next day for recitation to see some more example problems, work some problems out together. As I said here, anywhere from three to five videos. Um, all the recitations, if we do any, if we do any extra example problems, or if we need, if uh, you need some help with one of the homework problems, I'm more than happy to work through some of those homework problems with you in recitation. Um, but all of that stuff will be uh, recorded to Zoom through the uh, D2L supplemental instruction. Okay, so one of the drawbacks to having uh, video lectures is that you can't ask questions during the videos. So to help with that, that's why we want you to log into these recitation sessions. So if there was if there was something in the video that needs some clarification, or maybe I made a mistake in one of the examples, um, that's been known to happen. Uh, bring those questions and comments to recitation and we'll address them. You can also communicate with your classmates. That's highly recommended. Um, you've got the discussion boards, you've got the live chat. Um, you, can, you can set up your own individual Zoom sessions if you want. You know, um, even even if, you, if you can safely get together um, in, a, in a study group, just make sure you're social distancing. Um, but there's you know, there's, there's lots of different ways that uh, we, can, we can still remain in communication with each other. Uh, once again, for the homework, uh, all that homework is going to be on Wiley Plus. Make sure that uh, 
when you go to Wiley Plus and you check, let's see, did I close out of Wiley Plus? Thought I still had Wiley open. Oh, I guess not. I'll have to, have to reopen Wiley Plus here in a little bit. Uh, but all of the all of the assignments are already uh, scheduled in Wiley Plus. Uh, usually what I'll do is I'll, I'll, uh, I'll have a homework assignment due the day after the last class period that covers that material. And I'll usually open the next homework set um, the day before we start that particular chapter. So at the very least, you should have, I'd say, seven to ten days on any given homework set to complete it, sometimes longer. So do make sure you pay attention to those due dates. Um, I will always have homework due in the evening at 11.45 p.m. local time. I choose 11.45 because if I say, you know, 12 o'clock, some, some people, um, you know, does that mean a.m., p.m.? Well, so I'll just I'll just stick with uh, 11:45 p.m. for those for those due dates. Um, after the due date has passed, you will still be able to access and look at those homework problems. You just won't be able to change anything. You won't be able to submit anything. Um, if you wanna if you wanna get together and work in groups, like I said, that's fine. Just make sure that you're you're maintaining your social distancing. If you wanna get together over Zoom or one of the live chats, go for it. Um, <clears throat> uh, once again, if you uh, need some clarification on the homework, bring those questions to recitation. I'm happy to, to go over those with you. Um, it is recommended that um, if you are going to get together and work on these these homework sets, you know, work, work the, the problem by yourself first, then discuss it with um, your partner, or your group, um, don't, you know, don't just sit there and, and copy down somebody else's work because that's not going to help you, uh, especially when it comes to test day because then you're, you're probably not going to know what to do. Once again, there are the exam dates. Um, each exam will have 25 questions, which covers the uh, content from that portion of the semester. So exam one will cover content from, um, I'm going to go down to the, the schedule here. So exam one will cover content from chapters two through six. Exam two will cover content from chapters seven through 10. And then the final exam will be comprehensive, meaning everything that we've covered during the semester, chapters two through 10. I think this is where we were earlier. Uh, the final will be a little bit longer, um, but you know it'll be worth a little bit more as well. Again, comprehensive. The test grades will automatically populate to the Wiley gradebook, so you can come back after the exam closes and you'll be able to see what your score is. Uh, you will you will be required to. Uh, use what's called a, a lockdown browser. So it's a software that essentially uh, locks your computer so that you can't use your browser to go online and you know, try to cheat or anything like that. Uh, and then once the test is over, um, the lockdown browser will release your computer so that you can go back to using it for everything else. The exams will be timed. Uh, exams one and two will have a time limit of 120 minutes. Um, really, no one should need anything more than an hour. Uh, these exam these exams are written to be taken within uh, a single hour lecture time frame. Uh, but you know, just just given the situation and um, anyone that might have accommodations with additional time, that's what the, the one. 20 minutes is for. And then uh, the final exam um, will 
we'll probably end up having that as like a three hour window. So for D2L, again, here's the link to our D2L section. I'll go ahead and click on that. And this is for the supplemental instruction. This is the link that all students will use for their uh, their weekly quizzes. I guess it wants me to log in. So there we have that, and I do not have um, the syllabus posted here. Um, this this is the the joint supplemental instruction page, and this is where you're going to go to access your weekly quizzes, and those will show up under assessments. So you'll have a you'll have a quiz each week. Take that quiz, log in. Um, after the after the window of opportunity closes, then you'll be able to access your score. Uh, but you can you can use the communication for uh, discussion groups, live chat, etc. This is why this is why we want all of the students together in the same D2L page, so that everyone can communicate with everyone else. And also because. Um, now, there, now there's only one location where we have to post the quiz, and all of the professors will have um, access to the gradebook, so they can they can monitor um, quiz scores for all of their students. Back to the syllabus. So the quizzes um, they are something that is to be done on your own time but it is a mandatory component of the course. This is part of um, the weekly participation in the class. Uh, we, want, we want to make sure that uh, you're staying on top of the material and that you're, you're actually coming back and showing us that you know what you're doing in terms of the material. So that's one point of having these quizzes is to keep you on task. The other point is to provide you with some extra credit opportunities. So here's how this is going to work. Uh, if you want to work together with some other students on these quizzes, um, you can do that just like the homework. Um, really, really, it's all about getting the exposure to the material, communicating about the material. So if you want to, if you want to work together, that's fine. If you want to work independently, that's okay too. Uh, but just remember that um, every student has to submit their own individual quizzes to D2L to get the points. Um, let's see what else here. Uh, so we'll open we'll open the quizzes uh, on Wednesdays and then we'll close them on Thursday evenings. So you'll have about a little a little more than a day and a half to sit down and access those quizzes and get them done. And then uh, during the Friday recitations, um, professors will go over solutions to those quizzes and talk about the quiz. Um, you know, go, go through your reasonings as to why you chose this answer versus that answer, etc. They are going to be timed. Like I said, uh, you've got 30 minutes to complete it. We're going to have 12 quizzes throughout the semester, each one worth five points. Now, that means that there is potentially 60 points floating around up there. But if you check that against the grading system, um, the weekly quizzes only account for 50 points. What this means is that you can miss up to two quizzes during the course of the semester. Um, I went too far. There we go. So you can miss up to two quizzes during the semester, and it will not adversely affect your score. Um, if you want to, if you want to take all twelve quizzes, that's great. 
um, but you're only going to be able to earn up to a maximum of 50 points towards that participation score. And uh, that participation comes just from taking the quiz. If you participate in taking the quiz, you will get the participation points for that week. The extra credit comes from your performance on the quiz. So this is your incentive to actually take the quiz seriously. Um, if you get 100% on the quiz, then you will earn an additional five points for that week, up to a grand total of 50 points for the semester. So you'll have, you'll have a potential of 50 extra credit points available by taking those quizzes and actually performing well on the quizzes. If you miss more than two quizzes, then any quiz after that that's missed will receive a score of zero, and then that will start to adversely affect your grade. There will be no quizzes given during the weeks of exam one and two. So those, those quizzes will basically be replaced by the exams. So instead of logging in to D2L to take your quiz for that week, you're going to log in to Wiley Plus and take the exam. All right, extra credit scores and participation points will be tallied at the end of the semester. And since those, since those are happening on D2L, after we get those scores tallied, um, I will then um, transfer those over to your Wiley Plus grade book. So at the end of the semester, you can access your Wiley Plus gradebook and you'll be able to see exactly how many points you've earned during the semester and then you match that up against the, the 600 point total and figure out what your percentage is. And so everyone should be able to figure out what their grade is. Um, but in case you're not sure, just contact your course instructor and we'll let you know how you're doing. So those group discussions on D2L, uh, we'll, set up, we'll set up those discussion groups. You can come in. If you have a question, you can post it there. Hopefully other people are logging into the discussion page. And if you can answer someone's question, please do. Um, or if, you know, if somebody's looking uh, to get together and work on some homework, that's a good place to leave a message. And, Maybe there's somebody else out there that wants to get together and work on the homework as well. For the recitations, again, this is um, a live synchronous component. This is mandatory. This is how you get some of those participation points. You're going to log in via Zoom every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, this is where we'll go over some additional example problems. We'll have the activity for the day. And uh, by, by logging in, because all of these sessions are recorded, um, we, we can go back and we can check and see who actually logged in. And then we will use that to take attendance. And that is how you will earn your participation point for that day. Uh, in case you can't go to the live session, but you still wanna, you still wanna watch what happened in class that day, those will be recorded to D2L. Uh, just keep in mind that you're not going to get your participation points unless you're actually there and participating and joining in with that discussion. So these are the different uh, Zoom links that there are for those recitation sessions. So we have uh, Dr. French is 9 to 10, Dr. Martinez 10 to 11, myself 11 to noon, and then Dr. Reichenbacher is from 1 to 2. And so each of us will have a recitation every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at these respective times. Um, if you are my student, does that mean you have to log into my section? No. Um, if it's easier for you to log into Dr. French's section for the Zoom, that's fine. Um, Everything, everything is being recorded to the same D2L supplementary instruction page 
on D2L and all the professors have access to all that information. So this, this really gives you a lot of um, liberty to uh, setting up your schedule as to what time works best for you. And you know, maybe, maybe you're going to Dr. French's section, but you overslept or your alarm didn't go off. And so you have to go to Dr. Reichenbacher's section. That's fine. Do what you have to do. Uh, all right. So any student from any course section is welcome to attend any recitation section. Um, now, can you attend more than one? Yeah, you can do that as well. Uh, if you're really struggling on a particular topic and uh, maybe you, know, you logged into Dr. French's section and he wasn't able to get to your question, um, maybe you could log into Dr. Martinez's section and have him answer the question. Or maybe, maybe you want to see me work the same problem a different way if possible. You can do that. But you will only receive participation for attending one recitation per day. Uh, don't expect to, to log into all four of these and get you know, points for four different recitation sections. You need, you need to attend one section every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday during the week. Uh, so just like the, the quiz scores, these participation points will be tallied at the end of the semester and posted to your Wiley Plus gradebook. Different instructors may choose different exercises for their recitations, but regardless, you're expected to attend at least one of those every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Bring questions for discussion. Uh, as far as student conduct goes, um, everything here uh, is also accessible through uh, a student conduct handbook. Um, so you need to make sure that you're behaving yourself, treating other people with respect. Um, if you do see anything going on that's wrong, make sure that you are um, reporting that. Likewise, if I see something that's going wrong, um, I am obligated to report that. And then um, anyone with uh, documented accommodations, that, uh, those accommodations will come to me from the ADA office. Uh, sometimes I have students that bring me their letters. Um, that's okay if you want to bring your letter to me and if you want to sit down and discuss what your accommodations are. Otherwise, all of that information will be sent to me by uh, the ADA office and given that everything is online for the semester about the only accommodation that I expect to run into is uh, the uh, additional time for the exams but that has already been incorporated into the, the window that each exam will be available so that that additional time is there. And then if you do find yourself needing some extra help, make sure you're getting in touch with me or one of the other professors. Get in touch with Student Con, um, not Student Conduct, excuse me, Student Success Center. Uh, see what kind of tutoring services that they have available. Uh, and then if there's uh, something else going on where you need to talk to somebody, get in touch with the, the counseling services in the Surbeck Center. Uh, this next part, I took this from uh, Jamestown Community College. This is basically just a list of uh, what makes for a responsible student. And if you can go through here and check off a lot of these bullet points as you know, a, something, something that describes you, then we're gonna have a good semester. But if, if you go through here and you know, none of this stuff sounds like you, uh, then then you're probably not going to have a very successful semester. Um, so, you know, just make sure you're doing your own work. You're not cheating. Uh, attend, attend the recitations, log in, participate, get your stuff done on a, a timely manner. You know, don't, don't make excuses for everything. 
um, learn, learn some time management skills, and we'll have a good semester. Now, the last thing, one of the last things we have here is the schedule for the semester. So um, <clears throat> I, uh, I, made, I made the mistake of putting this stuff here on Monday the 17th. We don't actually have class that day. Um, but I, I will assume that you can, you can watch this video whenever you want. And then uh, we can talk a little bit about policies on uh, the 19th. But this is also where um, I will expect that you will have started watching the lecture videos. And as I said, each, each chapter will have between uh, three and five videos each. The way that I have this um, spread out through the calendar, each of these days are days that uh, you should be devoting to that particular chapter. But by August 26th, that should be the day where you have finished watching the final video for the chapter two material. And then I believe on uh, Friday the 28th at 11.45 p.m. I believe that's when the chapter two homework set will be due. So don't, don't wait until the last minute to start your homework because that chapter two homework set will be open the first day of class. You will have access to it. And so here you have, um, you know, a, a week and two days, so nine days, to get that first homework set done. If you wait until the last minute, you know, that, that's when uh, the Wi-Fi is going to go out. That's when the power is going to go out. That's when, uh, you know, your computer dies. Those, there's some kind of excuse that is going to prevent you from being able to do your homework at the last minute. But if you do a couple of problems every day, one or two problems a day, most of these homework sets aren't more than, you know, a dozen problems. So if you can do one or two problems every day, by the time you get to the due date, you'll be done. Um, also, there are advantages to starting your homework early because if you do run into an issue where you're not getting the right answer on the homework, then you can bring your questions to recitations. And so there's really no excuse for not being able to get 100% on all of these homework sets unless you're procrastinating or waiting until the last minute to get things done. All right, so once again, um, you know, mark those exam dates. Um, those are, those are going to be some times where you want to set aside a few hours, uh, find yourself a quiet spot with strong internet, and sit down and take those tests. Uh, you will notice that there are no holidays on the schedule, so uh, Board of Regents has decided to uh, take those holidays and turn them into school days so that we can finish the semester early. Our last uh, class day will be November 23rd, but we will be done with all of the course material before then. So we will utilize that as a finals review discussion. Uh, if, you know, if you're already moved out of campus for the semester, that's fine. You can, you can still log in wherever you are as long as you've got your computer with you. Then you've got Thanksgiving break, and then we've got finals week, which is all online. And again, we'll we'll have that window of opportunity for the for the exam. Um, some additional comments. Uh, again, you really need to be self motivated with watching those videos, logging in, participating, getting the stuff done on time. Um, we we talked about those video lectures and where you should be in terms of uh, the pacing. Um, always, always remember, you can go back and watch those videos as many times as you want. If you want to 
fast forward, do that. Um, I will, um, actually I meant to take this part out of the syllabus. Um, I do have a couple of extra videos that involve just example problems. Um, those, are, those are not required viewing, but obviously it's going to help if you can see some additional example problems worked out for some of this material. Otherwise, logging into recitations is going to be your best bet for seeing additional example problems worked out, plus you can ask questions along the way. And then just make sure that you're communicating with your, your course instructor on any issues that you're having, whether it's academic, technology issues, health issues, etc. You know, let us know because we're here to help. And um, if, if you wait until the last minute to tell us that you've been having all of these issues throughout the semester and we didn't know about it, you know, then we can't help. Uh, then we have uh, an addendum. So this came down from uh, uh, administration. Uh, just a few more uh, bits of information relating to the current COVID situation in terms of attendance for online classes. Uh, if you know that you're not going to be able to attend a class for some reason, uh, it It'd be really nice if you could let me know the reason. Um, if, it, if it's a personal reason and you don't want to discuss it, um, contact the Dean of Students and then they'll get the message to me that you won't be in class. Um, they, don't, they don't have to tell me the reasons why. They, you know. um, but uh, if, if you're just missing class because you don't feel like logging in that day or oversleeping, you know, that, that kind of stuff doesn't count as, as an excused absence. Um, but if, you know, if you do end up getting sick and you're, you're ill to the point that you can't actually log in and watch the videos and do your homework, then you do need to be in touch with uh, the Dean of Students Office and, and Campus Health. And then they'll, they'll let us know and we, we can help to, to best plan on either helping you complete the semester or um, possibly uh, arranging an incomplete for the semester or, or just having you start fresh next semester after you're well. All right, um, COVID statement on um, responsibility in reducing the spread of the virus. Uh, since, we're, since we're doing everything online, um, we, we really don't have to discuss too much about this, but anytime you're anywhere on campus in a public space, right now we're at uh, level three. So any public spaces, you need to be wearing a mask. Um, indoor public spaces, I should say. Uh, that includes uh, lecture halls and labs, but again, everything that we're doing is online, so um, we shouldn't have too much of a, a problem there. Uh, face covering policy, everyone needs to have some kind of a face covering, um, not necessarily a mask, you can have a face shield, but everyone has to, has to have something covering their face when they're in those public spaces. And then uh, copyright in terms of course materials, uh, any lectures and presentations that are made are the intellectual property of the school and the professors. So uh, these video lectures that I've made, um, you know, don't don't turn around and try to try to sell them or or show them to other people that are not registered students of this university. Uh, also, any of the Zoom sessions that are recorded are are not to be distributed elsewhere. Uh, so that's what that's there that is there for. And that brings us to the end of the syllabus. And so now what we want to do is uh, just quickly go back and look at some of the Wiley Plus stuff. So I'll log back in again. And let's see here. Go back to student view. Here is my section of Wiley Plus. 
And uh, so with the read study practice, as we said, if you click on there, you will have access to all of the uh, instructor videos. Um, but also, um, you can you can click on any of the chapters here. Let's since we're starting in chapter two, we'll click on chapter two, and this will bring up uh, all the different subsections for chapter two. So if you need to do some reading on uh, constant acceleration, we'll click on that. And basically, it just brings up that section of the e-text. You can read through it. It has all the descriptions, the definitions, the equations. Uh, sometimes they even incorporate some example problems that you can read through. And then if you scroll down even further, uh, the areas down here in uh, the bold print are even more supplementary materials that you can access. They've got simulations, they've got videos, they've got additional sample problems, animated illustrations, etc. You know, there's, there's all kinds of additional materials that you can access here uh, to help out with understanding the materials. Uh, here with the, the questions and the problems, these are, I'll click on the problem portion for chapter two, and thinking about it, there we go. Uh, this brings up a, a selection of some of the problems in the chapter. Some of these come with answers. Some of them come with uh, fully worked solutions. Um, but when it comes to your own homework, um, you will have your own numbers to work with. Um, let's see, at, at the time that I'm making this video, I don't have, actually have the assignments posted yet. Um, but every, every student will have the same homework set, but every student will have a different set of numbers to work with. Wiley Plus has a random number generator um, so that uh, even, even though you might have the same general solution as all of the other students, everyone has different numbers to plug into the equations. And so this, this is kind of Wiley's way to try and discourage cheating. But if you are sitting down with other students working on the homework together, my suggestion is to work out a general solution because the general solution will be the same for everyone. Then you can uh, step to the side enter your numbers, submit your answer to Wiley Plus and see if you get the right answer. And as you start submitting things to Wiley Plus, uh, once you get something right, uh, that, that will be uh, recorded and you won't be able to change it. And then the, the grade book will start populating. Again, since the, the homework assignments aren't accessible, um, there's nothing to show up in the grade book yet. But uh, on, the, on the first day of class, we'll We'll look through Wiley Plus, and I'll uh, I'll show you a few more things uh, specific to the assignments and the grade books. Uh, we have the downloadable e-text here, so if you want to actually download that file, and uh, dare dare I say, print out the textbook, you can do that. Um, but do do keep in mind that um, the textbook that we use. Um, it's um, Halliday Resnick Walker has more than just the uh, the nine chapters that we're going to use for this semester. We're gonna we're gonna start in chapter two and go through chapter ten, but the full text has more than forty chapters. So you you probably don't need to print out the entire textbook, but if you wanted if you wanted to print out you know one chapter at a time. You can do that. You just uh, need to be mindful of your print credits. But uh, even though we're not going to go past Chapter 10 this semester, you have access to all of the material for these other chapters. So if you want to, if you want to read ahead and you want to learn something about, you know, relativity or quantum mechanics or nuclear physics, go for it because you've paid for the access to this material. 
Uh, and then the last, the last uh, tab up here is Orion. And if you click on that, this takes you to another uh, website with um, a different type of uh, supplementary software. And I need to click on View as a Student. So this is what you'll this is what you'll see um, if you access this as a student. And basically, what this is is it's a, a bunch of multiple choice questions relating to each chapter. And this is, this is really good to use in preparation for one of the exams because our exams are going to be multiple choice. And each one of these chapters has about, I want to say about 20 questions each relating to that chapter material. So for, for test one, which is going to be chapters two through six, um, maybe you go through and you work five problems from chapter two and then five problems from chapter three, five problems from chapter four. You, know, you, go, you go through all of that and you try, to, you try to get five questions done from each chapter within the two hour time frame. And that would be a really good way to um, Kind of, kind of make yourself a practice test. And uh, just to give you an example of what this stuff looks like, if we click begin, actually I'll go up, I'll go with chapter one. Chapter one is measurements and units. Um, so the first thing it wants to know is, you know, how confident do you feel with the material from this chapter? And you're like, well, it's just units, you know, converting one unit to another. I'd say I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident. I know this stuff. And then uh, what that will do is it will adjust the difficulty level of the questions. So if you really don't know anything about uh, the material in this chapter and you click I don't know and you start the quiz, it'll start you off with about the easiest question that they have. If you think you know it, it'll, it'll start the difficulty level a little bit higher. Okay, so here's the first question. It says an alien planet uses the gnarl as a unit of length. If a square has side lengths 3.4 gnarls, what is the perimeter of the square? And they give us the different choices here. So perimeter is the measure of the outside of the shape. And so if each side is 3.4, square has four equal sides. I need 3.4 times 4, which is going to be 13.6. Well, there, there's two answers with 13.6. Do I want 13.6 gnarls or do I want 13.6 gnarls squared? Well, the, the perimeter is a measure of the length of the, the area that goes around the square. So that should be the unit to the, the first power. The, the squared unit of length, that should be for a surface area, and that's not what we're looking for. So I'm going to click B. And before I hit Submit, the, the program wants to know, again, how confident do I feel with this material? Or how confident do I feel with the answer? And again, this is going to help to adjust the difficulty level of um, subsequent questions that pop up. So I'm going to say, yeah, I, I really know this. I'm going to hit submit. And once I do that, well, it goes to the next question. So how do I know if I got the previous one right or not? Well, right over here is a little chart that says performance. And if I get a green bar, that means that I got that previous question correct. If it's red, then it means I got it wrong. The height of the bar indicates the difficulty level of that previous problem. Uh, now down here, this uh, percentage says um, about this question, so this question specifically, question two, it says that 62.5% of students that have used this software nationwide 
have gotten this question correct? And I, I think before I submitted the answer to the first question, it was it was something higher, like I want to say it was like seventy three percent or something for this question. But we got that previous question right. So now here's the next question. It says, which of the following represents the greatest speed? So is it one meter per second, one kilometer an hour, one mile an hour, one foot per second? So what do you think? Um, at this point, we'd probably have to get our calculator out, start doing some uh, comparisons and some conversions. But I'm just going to go ahead and guess at an answer. I'm going to click B. I'll say one kilometer per hour. I know, I know that's not the right answer, but, uh, and then I'm going to say, well, I'm, I'm somewhat confident. Um, actually, I'm, maybe I can even leave that blank. Yeah. It, uh, so there, it gave me a red bar. So I know I got that previous one wrong. And uh, uh, it actually says that, that that second question was easier than the previous question. But now we're to the, the next problem. During a short interval time, speed v of an automobile is given by this function where the time t is in seconds. The units of a and b are what, respectively? So um, I'm actually going to quit here because it, it's not really worth our time to go through every single um, question within this quiz. But I think you, you get the idea now that you can use this as a, a study guide um, for for the exam now what about what about the correct answers can I see the correct answers that's the one drawback to this the answer is no but um, what I what I do want to bring to your attention about using this as a study guide is um, for for our homework using Wiley plus you will be able to submit answers to your homework questions as many times as you want until you get the right answer. Now, that does not mean that you can just fish for answers all day long until you get the right answer, because I will be able to check up on the number of submissions that each student makes to their homework questions. And for, for one homework question, if it takes you one or two attempts to get the answer right, well, that's, that's about average. That's, that is to be expected. But if it's taking you 10, 12, 20 attempts just to get one answer correct, that tells me that uh, either you have no idea of what's going on or you are, in fact, fishing for an answer. And if that's the case, I can always uh, bring the number of submissions down to something more reasonable, like five or ten submissions per problem. But in the, in the case of an exam, you get one chance. You submit an answer, and it's either right or wrong, and that's it. And so here with, with Orion, uh, that, that, that does give you a better uh, indication of how you might perform on test is to see if with that single submission do you get it right or wrong and that's going to be more reflective of what would happen on an exam okay so back to uh, Wiley plus again tune in uh, the first day of class we'll talk some more about uh, how Wiley plus is going to work as for uh, the supplemental instruction um, come back Check on this uh, every week for the weekly quiz. Also come back here so that you can communicate with your classmates. Um, I'm not actually allowed to give out um, contact information for the students, but you will be able to communicate through the live chat and uh, uh, discussion boards, etc. So you, you will be able to uh, communicate with your classmates that way. And during the, the live sessions of uh, recitation, if 
you want to use the private chat to um, share contact information so that you can get together outside of class. Um, that, that is also acceptable. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, end the video here. Uh, if there's any if there's anything that I did not cover or that I skipped over or that needs some clarification, uh, bring that uh, to the discussion in recitation. Uh, otherwise, you can shoot me an email, stop by my office just to say hello. Uh, like I said, wear a mask and uh, I'll see you that first day of recitation.